we're going to be creating this minimalistic black and white portfolio website. It is perfect for complete beginners in web development. You only need a basic understanding of HTML syntax and CSS styling to get started. We're going to have a pretty nav section up here. If we click that, it takes us to the next section on our page. We have an about me section. We have your experiences section. We have your projects, of course, where we can link to the live demo of the project and the GitHub repo. We have a contact me page where people can send you an email or reach out to you on LinkedIn. And of course, here they can download your CV and get more of your contact info. And if we take a look here, we see that the website is also fully mobile responsive with a nice hamburger menu up here, replacing our desktop navigation. We are going to learn how to build all the parts of this website from scratch using only vanilla HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And we're going to host and deploy this website for everyone and all our friends to see using Netlify. We're going to use GitHub for version control. We're going to use GitHub desktop to smoothen the process. We're going to use Visual Studio code for writing our code and we're gonna use Google Fonts for adding a custom font to our website. So let's get started. First of all, if you don't have a GitHub account, I would go to github.com and simply create an account. It's quite straightforward once you have an account. Next step, go to desktop.github.com and download GitHub for your computer. If you have Windows or Mac, set that up. It's gonna ask you to log in with your GitHub account. Once you have logged in, it's gonna look a bit like this. Next step is to download Visual Studio Code. You get that from code.visualstudiocode. So download that and install. Once you have installed Visual Studio Code and run it for the first time, it's gonna look a bit like this. I'm now in the finished project folder, but we're gonna start from scratch in a moment. So let's set up our project folder. You see that I, the current repository I'm in on GitHub desktop is this finished project that I already made. But I'm going to create a new repository and if that's your first one, this is how you do it. So we go to file, click new repository. We're just going to call it whatever we want, it's not important. But I'm going to call it something similar to the finished one, HTML. Uh, dash CSS dash JS dash portfolio tutorial two. There we go. And then we just create the repository and we hit this publish repository. That's going to put it out on from our desktop here, from our GitHub desktop. It's going to publish it to our GitHub. Uh, where we can access it online on an, and on any computer. And uh, you can choose to keep this code private or not. That's up to you. I'm going to open that up to, to be public. And there we go. Once that is finished, we can open this repository in our Visual Studio code. And then we see that we indeed open that uh, project right here. You can see the name of the project here. And close this welcome uh, information. You can also delete this uh, uh, file here. You don't need it. Let's set our project structure up. So first off, we're going to create a folder and we're going to call that assets. And in this assets, we're just going to download from the repo in the description. It's going to look a little something like this. We're going to go to this code here, this green button. We're going to download that zip. We're going to open that folder. We're going to extract it here. We're going to go inside and we're going to find the asset folder. Inside the asset folder, just target everything. Let's actually just drag it in like this. So these are all the assets, all the pictures that we're going to be using for the website. All the logos, all the images and the resume. And here you can already switch this resume to your own. This is just a template I found online. Now that we have our assets, we're just going to create the rest of our files. We only need four more files. We're going to start with our HTML called index.html. 
we're going to create the next file called style.css. We're going to also have another CSS file called media queries.css. And we're going to have a script.js file. And that is all the files we need for this project. So let's get started with our HTML structure. First off, you're going to hold shift and exclamation mark or one. It's going to show this one up. You're going to click this exclamation mark and it's going to give you some basic boilerplate HTML uh, syntax. We're going to write in this title. We're going to write my portfolio. The next thing we are going to do in our Visual Studio Code is we're going to download an extension. We're actually going to download two. As you can see on this side here, these are extensions. If you don't have any and haven't downloaded any before, don't worry, it's quite easy. You see, these are the ones I have installed and we're going to install one called Live Server. This one by Ritwick Day. We're going to just click install here. That is going to enable us to basically run this website as if it was hosted online. And that's going to be very useful when we are developing our website and also when we are testing our JavaScript code that we're going to be running. The next thing we're going to install is prettier code formatting. This is going to help us basically keep our code in line, indented, and basically keep it uh, streamline the process of keeping our code clean and easily read. This one is optional, but highly encouraged. So we can go back to our Explorer. We can close that even. Next thing we're going to do is to reference these style sheets in our HTML document. We're going to write link style sheet. The first one is style.css. You're going to hold alt and shift and you're going to hit arrow down. This is going to copy that line. This is also a style sheet. We're going to link to our media queries file and hit save. We are then going to add in the bottom of the body we're going to add a script. And then when you start writing that, you see that this is the source. We're going to add the script.js file here. So now all the three other files, they're linked to this index.html document. Now we're ready to look at our website. Let's just write hello here to see if it works. When you have installed a live server, you should be able to see this button down uh, in the right corner here. You're going to click that and that is going to open a new web page. As you can see, hello shows up. Our web page is live. I'm also opening the already finished project here in a new tab so that we can reference it and kind of switch back and see how it looks like. So let's go back to our VS code and now we can start creating our website. The first thing we're going to create inside our body element is a nav element. It's going to have an ID of desktop nav and we're going to use this ID to target it with our style sheets. If you haven't been uh, using ID before. Inside the nav, we're going to create a div and it's going to have a class of logo. And here we're going to write John Doe, or you can write your name because we're just going to use our name as a logo, but you could have put the picture here if you wanted to. Under that, we're going to put another div. And inside that div, we're going to have an unordered list. And that is going to have a class of nav links. Inside there, we're going to have a list element. 
And inside that list element, we're going to have a link element. And this link is going to go to each section. What we're creating here is the navigation at the top of our web page. And it's going to lead using this hashtag. It's going to lead to each section that we are going to be creating later because each section is going to have their own ID tag similar to this. This one is going to be called about. And like previously, we're going to hold down shift alt and press down three times. Save ourselves some time there. Experience, projects, contact. Experience, projects, contact. Save, and you see that Prettier is doing its job, indenting it for us. Let's go see our page. Perfect. Things are working, and if we click about, you see that the URL is updating. So nothing is happening on the page because we haven't created that section yet. But basically, we see that the links are working as intended. Now let's start styling our website. I'm going to put our style sheet. If you just drag it to the right side of VS Code, you can see that you can get a split screen here. I'm going to drag the style sheet there and we're going to start styling our navigation. But first we're going to style, put in some general styling. And what I am doing here is I'm commenting out. So this everything in green is basically commented out code. You can type this um, like slash and then star and then you can type whatever you want and then end it with a slash and a star but an easier way is to just use the, uh, the uh, hotkeys for that which is holding in control and c so if you just control c you're going to comment and control c again you're going to uncomment the first thing we're going to do is we're going to target the whole page using star we're going to add a margin of zero and a padding of zero as well. This is going to remove any of the padding and margin beside, as you can see now, it's completely until the end of the page. It's just so we know uh, any padding and margins that are on the page is padding and margins that we have specifically put. Body. I'm going to target the entire HTML in the body. And we are going to say font family. Ah, now we are going to need to download and import that font we wanted to use from Google Fonts. Inside of fonts.google.com, we're going to search for pop-ins. We're going to click that. And we are going to go, I have already been here before, but I'm going to remove these. Start from scratch. We're going to scroll down and until you get to this light 300. We're going to click that. We'll click the 400, the medium 500, and the semi-bold 600. Then you're going to go up here and you're going to click on this import. And you're going to copy this code with this button. And then we're going to go back to our code. We're going to paste that in here. Remove the style. Save. We're going to go back to Google Fonts. We're going to scroll down and copy this CSS rule. Back to our code and we're going to paste that in here. There we go. Save and let's see how our website is looking. We can close this Google Fonts now. We don't need it. There we go. We see that the font has been updated. Next thing we're going to add is HTML. And we're going to make it so that the scroll behavior is smooth. 
This is so that when we add our links to the different sections on our page, it's gonna not instantly go to that page or that section. It's gonna scroll down in a smooth manner. We're gonna target our paragraph elements and we're gonna set all of them to have a color RGB of 85, 85, 85. Save. We're gonna add another comment, right? Transition, transition. And this is gonna be for the all the links and for another um, class we're gonna be making called BTN for button. And so that whenever we click these ones, they have a transition uh, that is gonna basically change between two states, two styles, um, and not be instantaneous. We're going to write, oh, forgot the actual transition. Transition all 300 milliseconds ease. Okay, so these are things we're not going to see in effect just yet, but it's good to just have them out of the way and uh, set up correctly. Now, Let's start for our navigation. Another comment here, desktop nav. We're going to target the nav itself. So this element. We're going to target the nav links. And we're going to display it flex. Okay, now we see that we have flexed the whole navigation, as you can see here. Turn off that. So the nav has been flexed and everything inside of the uh, nav, the logo and the div, is basically lying inside of the nav flexed. For the nav, we are going to justify content space around and we're going to align items center and we're going to set it to a height so the nav has a height of 17 view height so if you haven't been uh, working a lot with flexbox it's kind of a subject subject in its own uh, but basically uh, the display property uh, is what decides how things are arranged on your page. So it can be as a block, which is like the, or inline, which is the standard way where one element comes first and the next element under it and the next element under that again. But if you choose to display it as a flex, then suddenly it can come on the left or the right side of it and you can kind of uh, start adjusting it based on the view width as well as you can see uh, so it's a quite useful and very much used um, um, tool basically flexbox and as for the height um, 17 view height basically means that uh, whatever the view height of this screen is so this screen is like let's see uh, 667 pixels so 100 view height takes basically the whole screen. And now this nav is set to take 17% of the whole screen. You can see here, if I set it in our console here, if I set it to 100 view height instead, you see that the nav takes the entire page. 50 view height, and it takes half. Let's just reload that. Okay. Next thing we're going to style is nav links by itself. We're going to add a gap to rem between the elements that are flexed. We're going to add a list style, none to remove the bullet points in our links. We're going to add the font size to increase the font size a bit of rem. As well, if you're not familiar with REM, it's basically a unit of, of measurement within front-end development. It, uh, 
you can basically think of it as uh, it's another way to then to say pixels it's not pixels but it is related to it so uh, i think by default um, a paragraph is set to one rem and we can see that our navigation is starting to look better starting to look like something that the finished product is going to look like we're going to style the link element next we're going to give them a color of black we're going to give them a text decoration of none we're going to give them a text decoration color of white and then we're going to target the links when we hover over them we want to change the color to gray we want to add a text decoration underline we want to add a text underline offset 1rem actually let me show you i'm going to comment out this we're going to go to the page if i now hover over the links here you see that the underline is a bit tight to the text and i don't really like that style that's my personal preference you can leave it if you want but i like to basically space it out a bit so that you see that it's more underneath and a bit more space between the text and the line and we're also going to add a text decoration color rgb of 181 181 181 and we're going to save that we're going to check out the page and it looks pretty good next thing we're going to target the logo we're going to make it a bit bigger using font size to rem and so that's that's looking good but as you can see when we hover over the logo our cursor changes and we don't want that so we're going to target our logo hover and we're going to change the cursor and we're going to set it to default so now when we hover over the logo nothing happens whilst when we hover over uh, our links by default it has uh, it changes the cursor to a pointer so with that i think our navigation is is done let's check out yeah pretty much the same so back in our code we're gonna add the next element to our html doc document we're gonna add another nav because we're gonna create uh, the hamburger menu now so it is it's gonna have an id of hamburger nav inside there we're going to have another div actually this one we can just copy we're going to copy the logo save ourselves some time it's going to be identical under there we're going to have another div it's going to have a class of hamburger menu inside this div we're going to have yet another div we're going to have a class of hamburger icon and this is where we're gonna include some JavaScript it is the only JavaScript in uh, this entire HTML page it's a pretty basic on-click function we're gonna create to basically open and close the hamburger menu when we click it so it's gonna call it's gonna be an on click and we're gonna call that function that we haven't created yet toggle menu and then inside of this div we're gonna create a span Just indent that we're gonna hold shift alt and press press down twice so that we have three span elements these are going to be the lines of the hamburger menu that we're going to style later they're not showing up now and then under this div 
we're gonna have another div. It's gonna have a class of menu links. These are gonna be the actual links that are gonna be opened when we open with this function. And here we can also just copy these links here and just paste them right in. The only thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna add the on click event because we want to be able to both close it, open it, I mean, when we click this hamburger icon, but also when we click any link, we want the menu to close. So we're gonna just add the on click inside each uh, link element. We're gonna save that. So let's see how that looks. Perfect. Well, not perfect yet, obviously, but we're gonna style it just now to make it look like a hamburger menu. Here we're gonna write hamburger, hamburger menu. We're gonna target the hamburger nav. We're gonna display none so that when we are in a desktop view, the hamburger is just not showing up. We're gonna add a hamburger menu class, and then we're gonna set its position to be relative. We're gonna display inline block. We're gonna target hamburger icon. We're gonna display it flex. There's a bit of code going into the hamburger styling, so bear with me on this one, but we're gonna get through it. Flex direction, we're gonna put to column. We're gonna justify the content space between. We are gonna add a height of 24 pixels, width of 30 pixels, and a cursor of pointer. Okay. I think now is the time to also start our media queries because we want to actually be able to see the hamburger menu when we are working with it. So I'm going to drag that over to our style section of VS Code. I'm going to go into the media queries one. And here we're going to write media screen and max width 1200 pixels. And then we're gonna inside here, we're gonna target the desktop nav. And we are gonna display none. So what this code means is that when the screen size is lower than 1200 pixels, the desktop navigation, it's gonna disappear. And what we want instead to show up is of course the hamburger menu. So we're gonna target the hamburger nav. We're gonna set its display to flex. So let's test that. What happens when, let's see. I'm just gonna refresh the page here. The hamburger menu is accurately showing up, but the navigation is not disappearing. Let's see, what's the, what's the problem here? Did we write it correctly? Desktop, ah, I see, I have a, a typo here in the HTML. Let's save that. There we go, that was it. Very common thing <laughs> uh, in website development is a typo. And then now we were lucky. I saw it immediately, but you might be looking deep into the code, into some complex JavaScript, trying to figure out what the bug is, and you just had a typo. Very typical. So 
Um, let's go back. Now we can actually test our, let's go back to our style sheet, our, our style.css. Now we can test the hamburger menu. Let's see, let's keep it like that so we can see the changes. And then we can continue to add our styling. So now we want to target our hamburger icon and then the span which are the lines of the hamburger we're gonna put the width of 100 percent of its container we're gonna put a height of two pixels we're gonna put a background color of black and we're gonna put a transition to be the same as the one we made actually not we're gonna make another transition we're gonna make all 0.3 ease in and out and uh, this is basically what's gonna make the hamburger menu turn into an x when we click it because uh, when we click that x it's gonna close the hamburger menu as well next thing menu links and we're going to put the position of absolute. We're going to make a top. It's going to be going from the top 100%. It's going to be going from the right 0%. It's going to have a background color of white. This is the actual links we're going to be seeing when we open the hamburger. Width. Of fit content and we're gonna have a max height of zero we're gonna have an overflow of hidden and we're gonna have a transition of all this is gonna be the same copy that and put it there okay so let's see how it's looking now it's looking much more like a hamburger so when we did decrease the screen size and you can see that here lower than 1200 see it turns into a hamburger and that hamburger of course when we click it now nothing happens because we haven't made the function yet so let's do that so we're going to open our script we're going to write function toggle menu we're defining the function that we used earlier and we are gonna write we're gonna make a new constant called menu and it's gonna be equal to the document that means that it's we're basically using an inbuilt system in JavaScript that we're gonna target an element on our web page and we're gonna basically be using that element we're going to type query selector and we're going to be writing dot menu links that is let's see this one so we're targeting this whole element using this line we're going to hold down shift alt and press down copy that we're going to write icon here and we're going to write, instead of menu links, hamburger icon. Next thing is we're going to target that newly made constant menu. We're going to add a class list. We're using the toggle function, another inbuilt JavaScript function. And we're going to add the class open. We're going to shift alt down. And we're just going to change that to icon and there we go that is all this function needs so what we're doing here is we're targeting these two elements and then whenever we click it it's gonna either add or remove the open class uh, in the that element and that open class is going to have some styling So let's create that now. 
we're missing a couple of things first. Let's target the menu links and then the each uh, link within it. I'm gonna display block add padding 10 pixels text align center font size 1.5 rem color black text decoration none transition we're gonna copy this one and put it there next up menu links and then the list elements inside it we're gonna have a list style of none remove the bullet points again and under here menu links open so that means when we add this class this is what it's going to do so it's going to have a max height of 300 pixels next thing hamburger icon open span for the first child that means the first span element and we're going to write transform rotate 45 degrees as well as translate 10 pixels and 5 pixels what we are doing here is we are transforming the line by rotating it into an x and we're also moving it slightly because when we rotate it, it is actually going to be skewed. So we want to also not only rotate, but also move it slightly in both X and Y directions. We can target this whole line or this whole section. Shift Alt, press down two times. And here we're going to have instead of first child, we're going to have nth child. And then a colon two. So here we're targeting the second line. We're going to remove this code. We're going to write opacity zero, which means removing the first, the second line completely. And here we're going to keep this code. We're going to write last child. And instead of 45, it's going to be minus 45. And instead of five it's going to be minus five so there we go we're also going to add a hamburger icon span first child and we are going to transform none we are also going to copy this twice opacity one and here we're gonna have yeah transform none okay so that was a whole bunch of code uh, but now we are done and the hamburger menu should be working let's see we click it it opens our whole hamburger menu as we can see menu links open let's see we click it and we see that the open class has been removed. So every time we click it, it either adds it or it removes the open class. That is the only thing that this function is doing. This on click toggle menu. And when we click one of these, the menu should also disappear and it works. Congratulations, you've built your first fully functioning hamburger menu, if that was the first time. Now we can close this script. We don't need it anymore. We are done with JavaScript. We are also done with the 
heaviest part of this tutorial. It's good to get it out of the way in the start. The next thing we are going to be adding some styling for is the sections because all of the parts in our page is going to be divided into sections. So we're going to target a section. Actually, let's just build the sections first so you can see what I mean. The first section we're going to build and you can also close these navs now. We are done with them as well. So after the last nav, before the script, we're going to create a section. And this section is going to have an ID so we can target it later of profile. So this is our hero section. Could have been called hero, but that's what I called it. Uh, we're going to give it a div and inside that we're going to have a class of section underscore underscore pick dash container. And inside of this div we're going to have an image and it's going to have a source. We're going to uh, write we're going to write period and we're going to write we're going to write dot slash assets and we're going to write profile pick and then we're going to target that one in the alt we're going to write john doe profile picture and we're going to save so let's see what that looks like there we go that is a big ass picture uh, we're going to style that later but we see that it works. Under this div, we are going to add another div. It's going to have a class of section underscore underscore text. And inside of that, we're going to have a paragraph with a class section underscore underscore text underscore underscore p1. And inside here, we're going to write, hello, I'm, and under the paragraph, we're going to add a h1 with a class of title, and we're going to write John Doe. And then a final paragraph with a class section, underscore, underscore, um, text underscore underscore p2 and inside here we're gonna write front end developer let's see how that looks yeah there we go so as you can see we haven't flexed uh, this section as we did the nav we're gonna do that and you can see that things are just coming one after the other and they would continue like that if we left it with the default uh, display settings. Under our last paragraph element, we're going to add another div with a class of btn container, button container. And we're going to add a button with a class of btn, btn color Two. So we haven't made these um, classes yet. We're going to make them later. We're going to add another on click. And it's going to be targeting the window, which is basically saying the whole web page. And we're going to open. And we're going to write these colons and we're going to write dot slash assets you see vs code already suggests we can click this another slash you can write resume it suggests the resume and there we go so let's check if that showed up and is working we have let's see where's the button Let me just close that. Hmm. It is not. Ah, of course, we didn't write anything here. So download CV inside of the actual button. There we go. 
Now, if you click that, we see that the resume is opening. Great. Back to our code. We are gonna copy paste this button. And inside here, we're gonna leave everything in the class as is. Um, instead, we're gonna just write color one. Instead of color two, we're gonna have on click and it's gonna be instead of window open, location href and it's gonna be set to dot slash and then hashtag contact which is basically sending uh, the person to the contact section of our website that we haven't yet made But we see that hopefully when we click this button, it's going to update the URL. Oh. It is not doing that. Let's see. Let me just refresh. It is not working. Contact info. Let's see, is that, ah, we don't need these, uh, this colon and we need an equals instead. Let's save, Let's see if it works now. And it works. You see that the URL is updated and when we have our contact page or a section, it's gonna lead there. So back to our code, under our button and under the first div, we are going to add another div. It is going to have an ID of socials container. It's going to have an image and its source is going to be dot slash assets. You're learning this already now. LinkedIn PNG. We're going to just write uh, my LinkedIn profile we're gonna add a class of icon which we are gonna be creating and we're gonna create another on click here with location href equals and two semicolons inside here we're gonna write http S. Basically here you can just paste in your LinkedIn profile. I am just going to write linkedin.com slash. But here is normally where you would put your own profile link. Okay, let's see if that shows up correctly. Yep, when we click it, it goes to LinkedIn. So obviously it's very big and uh, hasn't been styled yet. Let's copy this image because we're going to add our GitHub as well. So instead of the LinkedIn picture, we're going to add, let's start writing Git, GitHub. And then we're just going to change this, my GitHub profile, the icon class that is the same. And here we're just going to write Git. Okay, and equal here, and same here, you just add your own GitHub account URL. That is all for this profile section. Let's get to styling it. So now you understand what the section part is here in the CSS file. So we're going to target all sections, basically everything that has, that is within this. And we're going to say that every section has a padding top of four view height because we want a bit of space between each section and then we have a height of 96 view height and together they make up a hundred we want to have a margin of zero in the top and bottom and 10 rem on the sides 
and we have a box sizing border box and then we're going to have a min height of fit content basically it's ensuring that things are not overlapping each other and that it looks nice we're going to have another class here section container we're going to display flex and then we're going to target the profile section specifically. Uh, here we're going to target the profile ID. We're going to display flex. So you might see that we're repeating ourselves a bit. Display flex, display flex. I could have, you know, written it like this. Targeting them both at the same time. Saved myself some pieces of code. But I'm specifically not doing that in order to make it more clear uh, for you when you write the code, uh, which section, which style goes to which section. Uh, although you might do this differently uh, when you are working with a real project, um, you might shorten these things, put them together, um, write dry CSS, which stands for don't repeat yourself. Um, I still find that doing it in this way, although it is repetitive, it is... Uh, very easy to see what is styling what. So we're going to add a justify content center. We're going to add a gap of 5 rem. We're going to add a height of 80 view height. Let's see how it's looking. It's looking closer to what we are going to have as the finished product. We're going to target our section underscore underscore pick container we're gonna display flex we're gonna set the height to 400 pixels we're gonna set the width to 400 pixels and we're gonna set the margin to zero in the top and auto on the sides no sorry auto on the top and zero on the sides and that is styling our image as intended. Then we are going to target the section text align self to center and text align center. Let's see. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see now. We're gonna have to style those icons soon. Next style is section underscore underscore text and then the paragraphs in them. It's gonna have a font weight of 600. And the section underscore underscore text underscore underscore p1 it's gonna have a text align of center we're gonna copy this code it's gonna have a font size of 1.75 rem it's gonna have a margin bottom of one rem then we're going to target the title and it's going to have a font size of three rem and text align of center and finally in the section social socials container display flex justify content center margin top one rem and gap one rem then we're just going to create a little section for the icons there's several and we're going to add 
icon, cursor, pointer, and we're going to make them have a height of 2 rem. So let's see how that looks. Perfect. We can see that our buttons are not fully styled yet. We're going to do them just now. But everything seems to be aligned the way that we want them to. Also, we see that we are lacking some styling on the on the text here. We might have missed something, but let's see. Let's do the buttons first. We see that we're, we're going to put uh, some hover effects and uh, change the styling at the border. So let's do that first and see if we have missed something here or if we had put that styling somehow in the buttons section. So the next styling is going to be called buttons. We're going to target button container. Display flex justify content center. I'm gonna add a gap of one rem. And then we're gonna target the ETN font weight 600 transition all 300 milliseconds ease. Adding one rem width eight rem border radius two rem and then we're gonna target the BTN color one and BTN color two. We're going to give them a color and we're going to give them a border of RGB 53, 53, 53, 53. Save that. We're going to say 0 0.1 REM solid. And then we're going to copy this down. We're just going to add a hover behind the two. Hover. Colon hover. And we're going to make the cursor when we hover turn into the pointer. So we see that these are links. And then we are going to copy this again. We're going to remove the hover on the first one. And we are going to change the styling to set a background of RGB 53, 53, 53. We're going to set a color of white for the text. Then we're going to write button color one hover set the background to RGB zero 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 and then we're going to set the button color two to background none BTN color to hover border RGB to 55 to 55 to 55 one sorry 0 0.1 rem solid and the last one BTN container Set that to have a gap of one rem. How is it looking? 
Amazing. All apart from this one. So what class is this? Section text P2. So let's see if I misspell that perhaps. In our style. Control F and you can search for that. Underscore underscore. Section text text. Ah, let's see. I just wrote P1 again. So P2. Let's see. I think that was it. Yeah. So as we can see, we have finished our hero section. We have our profile. We have our download button. It works. Opening our CV up. We can go to our contact page, which will lead us to our contact info at the bottom. We can open our social media profiles and all the buttons up top work and if we decrease the screen size the navigation turns into a hamburger now the rest of the hero is not yet a mobile optimized we're gonna get to that but let's just ignore that for now back in our code let's close this profile section and start the next section so in our next section that's going to be our about section so it's going to have an id of about and we are going to inside of that create another paragraph with a class of section underscore underscore text p1 we're going to reuse that and we're going to right get to know more we're gonna go down here we're gonna change this class to title we're gonna change that to h1 and we're gonna write about me under the h1 we're gonna create a div with a class of section uh, let's see we haven't created that section container inside of this div we're going to create another div with a class of section underscore underscore pick container inside of here we're going to add an image with the source of asset about pick.png and this is just gonna say profile picture picture and it's gonna have a class of about pick there we go under this div we're gonna have another div with a class of about details container inside here another div with a class of about containers don't forget the s another div class details container I know this is becoming a lot of containers but uh, bear with me it's for the greater good image inside of that one with the color sorry with the source of assets so I haven't actually explained that before we're using this dot slash to go basically uh, into the asset folder and then uh, in the asset folder by using slash we are gonna choose the let's see experience png and then the alt text is gonna be experience icon and then the class is gonna be icon let's see how that looks so here we go if we now click the about 
here in our navigation, we go to the About page, and this is the icon we just added, as along with the profile picture. Looking good. Under this image, we want to add an H3, where it says Experience. We want to add a paragraph that says two plus years. And then we will add a BR, which stands for break, to go to a new line. And we want to uh, write front end development. Looking good. So far, so good. And then under this div, we want to add another div with the class of details container as well. And then we can actually copy most of this or all of this inside here. And we're just gonna change from experience to, let's see, education. And remove that to education icon class stays the same and we're going to write education and we're going to write bachelors of science let's say in a bachelor's degree and here we're going to write master of science in a random master's degree How is it looking? Awesome. Now under not the first, but the second div here, we're going to add another div. And it's going to have a class of text container. And here is where we're going to write the about text. We're going to write lorem, uh, let's say 50, hit enter, and we get some lorem ipsum text. see awesome then under this div and the next one let's see right before the section ends we are gonna add an image and it's gonna have dot slash assets arrow this is gonna be the arrow that is on the side here that takes us to the next section on our page. It's gonna have an alt of just arrow icon. It's gonna have a class of icon and arrow. And it's also gonna have an on click event that is gonna go to location href and it's going to have two uh, colons here single and we're going to go to dot slash experience section of our page which is the next section we're going to be making so that is all for this section let's now add the styling Scrolling down, we're going to write about section. We're going to target the ID about, position that to relative. We're going to target the about containers. We're going to add a gap of two rem. And then we're going to target about details container. We're going to justify content to the center. We're going to flex the direction to column. And we're going to target about containers along with about details containers container 
And then we're going to add the display flex to both of them. Actually, we're going to add some more in the about containers. We're going to add margin bottom to rem. And we're going to add margin top to rem. Next thing we're going to target is about pick. We're going to add a border radius of 2 rem. We're going to target the arrow. <clears throat> We're going to add a position of absolute because we want it to be absolute on the page and not relative to anything else. Actually, where it's going to be absolute to the section right minus 5 rem and bottom 2.5 rem so that is basically putting it minus 5 from the right corner here minus 5 rem is there and then 2.5 rem up from the bottom which is there and it's absolute within this whole section next things we are targeting is details container we're gonna add a padding here of 1.5 rem we're gonna add a flex of one we're gonna add a background of white we're gonna add a border radius of two rem we're gonna add a border of RGB and it's going to be 53 53 and 53 and it's going to have 0 0.1 rem solid border and the border color of RGB 163, 163, 163. And last, a text align to the center. As for our picture, we see that we are lacking some styling yet. Let's add that. Section container gap of 4M and a height of 80 percent and a section underscore pick container of a height of 400 pixels and width 400 pixels and a margin of auto and zero Ah, there we go. It looks pretty spot on to what is the finished product. Let's see. About. And if we go to the same page, it looks identical. So now we have our hero section done and we have our about me section done. Let's go to the next experience section. Back in our code, we can close our about and we are going to add another new section. It's going to have an ID of experience inside of here. We are going to be writing another P with a class of section text P1. We're using, reusing this class. If you have noticed that, we're also going to write an H1 here with a class of title as well reused. We're going to write experience the right way. Um, at least I think that's the right way. We're going to write a div with a class of experience details container. And inside of here, we're going to write another div. It's going to have a class of about 
containers. And inside of this one, another div class details containers. So quite familiar uh, syntax as the page above. Um, and inside of this one, we are going to write our h2, which also has a class experience subtitle. And here it's going to say front end development. And under the h2, under the h2, we're going to have another div with a class of article container. That is a lot of divs and a lot of containers, so please bear uh, with me and uh, watch out for any typos. I might have done some myself. We'll see that when we see the final page. Inside the article container, we of course want to add an article. Inside the article, it's going to be an image. This is going to be the, what we're building here is going to be the, this section uh, and every article is going to be basically a skill that we have. Okay. So we're going to give this source our asset folder and we're going to give it our check mark, check mark PNG. And here we're going to write experience icon. And it's also have a, gonna have a class of icon. Under here, we're gonna add a div. And inside this div, we're gonna have an h3 that says HTML and a paragraph element that says experienced. How is this looking? Back to page we're actually let's also check this button if it works it works like a charm so this is also being styled already from the icon styling we have and the various containers that we're using here so we're reusing the style we already made and you might notice that it's going a bit quicker you know the, the titles are still like we just made them once and now we're reusing them so that's the benefit of thinking a bit uh, beforehand or rewriting your CSS when you're doing a project like this, because a lot of the styling you could uh, optimize. And definitely there is plenty of room to optimize this further. We are gonna copy this article five times. So hold down Alt and Shift and hit the down key five times. One, two, three, four, five. This is gonna be a bit of a repetitive uh, section but we just basically want to change these values to the different skills that we have. So CSS, we'll leave that as experienced. We'll leave the class and the alt the same. Oh, I have a, a mistake here. Let's remove that from all these. Otherwise, it's it leaves the room for some bugs. There we go. So back to our CSS article, we're going to remove the, no, actually we're going to keep everything the same because we're just reusing, the only thing we're changing is the text. So awesome. So then we're going to go down here. We're going to write SAS intermediate. We're going to write JavaScript. Oh, I was the wrong place. Java script basic. We're going to write type script basic. And we're going to write material UI intermediate. All right. How is this looking? Well, we have the whole list. It's not styled properly, of course, yet, but it's showing up pretty good. 
Next thing we want to add is the, this is the front end part. We want to add the back end part that we see here. And we are going to cheat a bit because we're just going to copy this article container. Actually, we're going to copy the whole details container. Arrow, uh, shift, alt, arrow down, if you remember. And then we can kind of close this first details container, focus on the second one. And here we are going to change these to post, grid, SQL, write basic here, no JS, intermediate, and then express JS, intermediate, and git intermediate all right now we have both our skill sets ah we need to remove the last parts let's see we have two two articles too much also you here you can add as many as you want um, as many or as few uh, skills you actually want to put there so let's see again. Yeah, now it's looking good. So let's start styling this section. I think that's everything we want to have here. Or actually, let's uh, let's go up here to the about uh, section. We want to grab this arrow, which is just an image. And we're just going to copy that and use that in our experience section. Let's see the last part here, right before the end of the, yeah, that's the correct place, I think. Let's see. Mm, might not have done that right. Let's see. No, it should be, that was not right. Let's see what I did wrong. Well, first of all, we need to write projects, but it shouldn't be that. Hmm. It's showing up here. Where? Wait, let's see. If I close this, it's still in the, the section. That is very weird. What happens if I remove it? Yeah, it seems like we are... Let's see. Well, this is a part of writing anything, any code, any project. You have to like, um, oftentimes bug check, see what's going on. So it's showing up inside of the experience section but it is not in the section it is showing up here that is very weird we have our ah of course i know what's wrong it's because we haven't given um these arrows ah, that is that makes a lot of sense <laughs> so these arrows actually use the position absolute so that means that this arrow is absolute to its the first parent element that has uses position relative and because we haven't yet made the experience section have the position of relative it is going back to the um, main profile section so let's just change that real quick let's add that styling 
let's uh, add the experience section here and see if that resolves it. Uh, let's see, we have experience and then we have a position of relative. Let's see if that did anything. And there you go, that solved the issue. Now our arrow is showing up in the first parent element that is now experience that uses the position of relative. That's just how positioning works and position absolute works. Uh, and yeah, you gotta, you gotta keep your code straight. Um, but yeah, bugs happen all the time. You gotta get used to that. As for the rest of the experience styling, let's add some more. So we're gonna target the experience subtitle. We are gonna add some color here, RGB, 85, 85, 85. We're gonna add some font weight of 600, font size of 1.75 rem, and a margin bottom of 2 rem. experience details container display flex justify content center and flex direction column how is it looking not much has changed visually these are going to come into play later. Now we want to target our article container. We want to display it not in line, but flex. We want to text align initial. We want to flex wrap. And we want to put it as a wrap. Basically, when the container, when these are going to be bigger than the container, which is not happening now, uh, they're going to wrap under each other. So let's see what happens when I decrease. Yeah, there we go. So now instead of going up over the container, whenever the container that is called, let's see. Let's open it up here. About kind of details container. Whenever it is too small for all its content, the content is basically going to wrap uh, itself down to fit the width of the container. That is what this um, styling property of flex wrap does. We're going to add a flex direction of row. We're going to add a gap of 2.5 rem. And we're going to add a justify content space around. Next thing we're going to target is the article. We're going to put the display of flex as well with the width of 10 rem and a justify content of space around as well, as well as a gap of 0 0.5 rem. And the last thing we're going to target in the experience section is the icon inside of the article. And we're going to put the cursor to not pointer, but default, Wait. default. There we go. So how is the section looking now? Hmm, we are missing something. We have, we don't have our border. Let's see. Okay, so we are missing a bit of styling here. Let's see why the border is not showing up. It is styled as the details container. It is having a border here and it is not doing that here. Let's see probably just missed it 
details container yeah it doesn't have a border huh. okay let's go up to R and we don't have that ah it's in the um, <laughs> ah we probably let's see details container ah typo once again it can be fickle we have an s here plural and singular we're mixing them around if i had written this code over again i would probably stick with one uh, let's save that and see what happens there we go and our styling is as intended let's see is it similar let's click on the experience here and here and then it gets to the same place ish yeah the reason one is higher than the other is due to the media queries we're gonna add later um, but they do look very similar don't they yeah okay then we are done with the experience section next section we're gonna make is the project section so we can close this part and we can create our next section give it an ID of projects I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna remove this color that I started writing for some reason I'm gonna add our project section here so that's ready in our project section we are gonna write another paragraph this is getting um, familiar we're gonna add a p1 we're gonna browse my recent I'm gonna add an h1 class title projects and then under here we are gonna add another div with a class of experience details container with a div under it or inside it with a class of details container and color container so two classes inside we're gonna add another div with a class of article container then we're gonna add an image and it's gonna have a source of assets and it's gonna have the project one png and here in the alt we're just gonna write project one capital and we're gonna give it a class of project uh, EMG IMG under this div we are gonna write an h2 we're gonna give it a class of experience subtitle as well as project title and here we're just going to write project one under this h2 we're going to write another div with the class of button container inside here a button class btn btn color two and project btn inside we're gonna have github written and we're gonna add a class no sorry a on click and it's gonna lead to a location dot href equals let's see why ah, okay we're gonna add a single 
quotes here and a double quote here. There we go. And here we're going to just write HTTPS. And I'm just going to write github.com. But here you can put your own GitHub repo for any projects that you have made. We're going to save that. Let Prettier uh, deal with the formatting and check out what it's looking like on our web page. There we go. Our first project is up and running. Not styled very pretty, but it is there with a link that works. Okay, cool. Now the rest is just basically copy paste. So we can save a bit of time there. First, we're gonna add the second button. Let's just copy this button in here. This button is gonna have button color, the same class. It's gonna have just a live demo written instead. I'm gonna leave that as GitHub, but when you deploy a project like we're gonna do with this, portfolio website, you can of course link to the finished URL here. So is are both showing up? Let's see. Yeah, and they both have this nice hover effect that we have already previously made. Now we're going to close it all the way up here until the details container, color container. And we are just going to copy this two times because that's going to be our project, our different projects. So let's see. One, two, and three. Perfect. Now we can update uh, each one. Let's see. Project one is done. Project two, we're just going to change the image to project two, the alt to project two. We're going to change the text here to two and leave this as is. Save and check that, that it worked. That's the next project, perfect. And the same for the last one we copied. Here we're going to write project three, three, and three. And save and check that. Works like a charm. Okay. As well as in the other sections, we are going to add right before the end of the section, our arrow. So let's go grab that in the experience section. Let's see, there's the arrow. Close that again. Let's see, there we go. And paste it here. Check to see if it's added properly. Yeah, of course, the same styling issue we had in the past. So we're going to target in our CSS the projects. We're going to this uh, position it as relative. And then we're going to check. Was it relative or absolute? Yeah, position relative. Projects. Did I call it project or projects? Projects, it's correct. Let's see, maybe I didn't save. Let's update the page. Maybe it's not showing up yet because, ah, it's there. It's because the page hasn't been, uh, the project uh, pictures are taking too much space, but it is showing up correctly there, okay. So then we are done with the HTML section. Let's get to styling. I'm going to close this so we can see what we're doing. Um, in the project section, we want to add our color container. We want to add a border color RGB. 163, 163, 163. We want to add a background of RGB and 250, 250, 250. 
done with this one. Project image. We want to add the border radius of 2 rem width of 90% and height of 90%. Feel free to play around with these um, um, these metrics. I'm basically picking something that I that I uh, found to look good, but you can uh, definitely tailor this to your own liking. Next thing we're going to target is the project title. Margin 1 rep color black and we're gonna target project project btn color black and border color rgb we're just gonna copy this one actually There we go. I think that is everything we need for our project section. Let's see. Hmm. Obviously not. Something is not working. So as we can see here, they are supposed to be flexed and they don't seem to be. Let's see. We inspect this. It's good that we're having all these problems because then you get to see how to basically go around uh, bug checking. So the first thing I like to do is just inspect what's going on. We already have a finished product here, so we have something very easy to compare with. So this container, as you can see here, is flexing, and so is this one. I'm uh, wondering that this about containers is probably not being flexed. And I'm wondering if it's <laughs> uh, yet another S. That is either missing or too much. Let's see. It was about containers and here it's called, let's see. Hmm. It is not inside any container called about. Did we miss it? Let's see. Projects. Yeah, I think I just forgot to create it. So above our um, or actually under our experience details container we're gonna add another div we're gonna call it uh, with a class of about containers and we're gonna cut this section out we're gonna fold these in two three and we're gonna add the div on the end and save and then let's see if that solved our issue it did okay looking good it does look similar to what the finished project is going to look like let's see we go to projects here we go to projects here it's working perfect if we go from the experience part to projects it is working okay there we go. Big change just for getting one div. We are getting close to the final section of our project and that is going to be our contact page. So I'm just going to create that section in our CSS. I'm going to close this project section. I'm going to add our last section and it's going to have an ID of contact Inside the section, we're going to have another paragraph with a class section text P1. And it's going to write get in touch. Under here, 
another h1 class title contact me and then under there a div with a class of contact info up, upper container info info upper container there we go and inside here another div with a class of contact info container and inside here an image and it's gonna have the assets folder and it's gonna be the email png with an email icon as an alternative text and a class of icon as well as contact icon there we go we are gonna add a paragraph here inside here we're gonna add a link it's gonna use the mail to inbuilt um, HTML and we're gonna send that to example mail at gmail.com so when people click this on a phone for example or any device that supports it it's going to open their uh, local email app. And we're going to write example at gmail.com. If they also just want to write it manually. I'm going to save that and check out how that looks. Cool. We have our contact me section as well as, well as our email here. If we click it here, it's not going to do anything, not at least on my uh, browser, because I don't have that uh, functionality. But on the phone, I can assure you that it works. We are going to copy paste this div. We're going to reuse most of it. We're going to change this to, let's see, we're going to keep the, we're going to change this to LinkedIn link in icon and we're gonna change the this is gonna stay the same okay and this is gonna be changed to link in and we're gonna change this not as a mail to but as a link to our LinkedIn profile so it would be like your profile here let's save that and see looking good hmm, there's a bit of a slight ah in our uh, example page here I haven't changed the logo here so we're gonna have to do that with this change the size of this uh, image here but we're gonna get to that no worries that is all we need in this section let's go and add some um, styling to it so first we're gonna target the contact section we're gonna display flex we're gonna justify the content that is this that is flexed to the center I'm gonna flex direction column. I'm gonna put height to 70 view height. Uh, we're gonna target the contact info upper container display display flex. We're going to justify the content to the center. We are going to add a border radius of 2 rem. We're going to add a border of RGB. Here it's going to be 53. And it's going to be 53 here and also here. We're going to add 0.1 rem solid. 
we're gonna add a border color of RGB 163 163 163 we're gonna add a background of 250 on all of them and we're gonna add a margin of 2 rem auto and a padding of 0 0.5 rem how is it looking much much better starting to get there we are gonna add the next part which is the contact info container and we're gonna display this flex we're gonna align items to this center we're gonna justify uh, the content and we're gonna put that to the center we're gonna add a gap of 0 0.5 rem rem and margin of 1 rem we're next gonna target the contact info container and the paragraph inside of it we're gonna make the font size larger we're gonna contact an icon within it and we're gonna change the cursor we don't want people to click the the icon because it's actually not a link it doesn't do anything but by default since we're using the uh, icon class that we have previously made we want to specifically make this cursor the default instead but only within the contact icon that we have here so compared to the social media icon here i think i also want to try to make uh, the sizing be the same so i'm gonna add a height of 2 rem and see if that solves it no let's see 2 rem Okay, let's uh, let's just see if this is doing anything. Ten rem. Yeah, indeed. So it seems that the email icon is just a bit smaller than the than the LinkedIn icon, or that the LinkedIn icon is bigger. So we're just gonna add an extra class here, or we're gonna many ways to do that. We're just gonna add some styling. contact we're gonna add another class called email icon and we're gonna add that one in the email icon class list there we go now we can target it specifically we're gonna say that the height is 2.5 rem let's try that that looks much better that looks like it's the same height so maybe if you zoom in close they're different but close enough to to uh, fool anybody having a quick glance okay so that's corrected and we are done with our uh, contact section let's close the contact section and we're gonna add a footer the last part of our website Inside the footer, we're going to add a nav. Inside that, we're going to add a div. And we are going to add a class called nav links container. In here, we're basically just going to copy paste what we have in our uh, desktop nav. Let's take everything from the UL. and paste it in here and then we are gonna add under the nav a paragraph 
we're gonna write copy right <laughs> copy right that's how you write that and hashtag one six nine and then a colon or a semicolon that is probably called this is basically the sign when i save this i can show you that's the sign for the copyright symbol it's an html um, symbol next thing we want to write 2023 john doe or whatever year you're watching this in john john <laughs> i'm getting more and more dyslectic as uh, this uh, tutorial goes on john doe all right reserved there we go that's looking very official uh, and then we just need to add the last styling to our footer footer section and then it's gonna be footer and we're gonna write height of 26 view height and a margin of zero on the top and the bottom and one rem on the sides further we want to target the footer and all the paragraph elements inside of it we want to text align them to the center how does it look perfect so there we have it our desktop version of our website is done let's check about me section works experience section works project works and contact section works and these buttons seem to be working as well takes us up to the about section perfect now as we can see this all turns very very bad when we start decreasing the screen size it's not responsive we are gonna fix that right now and i think for this part i am going to be putting the screen side by side so that we can see what we are doing here we go we don't need the html anymore so i can close that and we are done with our uh, css uh, like our normal style sheet our desktop style sheet if you if you will so now we're going to focus on the media queries and we're going to target different screen sizes to make them look as we want them so if you click this button up here let's see i'm going to decrease this oh click that button we're going to add the dimension of the iphone se i'm going to make this much smaller Put that to a hundred. No, let's see, seventy-five. Zoom out. Okay, that's how it looks so far. Quite terrible. And now let's let's save. See that it updates. Perfect. Okay, we are ready to add our our media queries. Uh, we're gonna start with. A, a bigger size so we're going to copy this up here we're going to change this side to 1400 pixels we are going to rewrite this we're going to add profile the profile section we're going to make it a height of 83 view height we're going to add a margin um, bottom of six rem we're gonna add about containers and we're gonna flex wrap use wrap getting better and as for the 1200 view width we're gonna add some more things here we are going to add experience as well as the ID and the experience details container class. 
and then we are gonna put them to a margin top of 2 rem. Next thing, profile as well as section container. We're going to give them a display of block. Getting better, still weird, but getting better. And we're going to target our arrow. And we're going to make it disappear when it actually gets uh, to 1200 pixels. And we are going to target our sections as well as our section container and we are gonna adjust the height to fit content and then we are gonna target our section by itself we're gonna add a zero we're gonna add a margin of zero and five percent looking much much better still not great but much better then we're gonna add a section underscore underscore pick container width 275 pixels height 275 pixels and a margin of zero auto to rem. Last class in the 1200 pixels is about containers. And we're gonna add a margin top zero. So it's starting to look good. It's still a bit uh, wonky, uh, mostly because of this contact me uh, section here that it pushes the page a bit further than it needs to be. But we're gonna tackle that right now. So we're gonna copy this part for ease. We're just gonna do like this. We're gonna write 600 pixels here instead. And we are gonna target the contact section along with the footer. And we're gonna give them a height of 40 view height. We are gonna target the profile and give it a height of 83 view height as well as a margin bottom of zero we are gonna target the article and we're gonna give it a font size of one rem we're gonna target the footer and the nav inside of it uh, give it a height of fit content and a margin bottom of 2 rem. Next is about containers, contact info, upper container, as well as BTN container. Don't forget the dot there. And we're going to give them a flex wrap of wrap. Looking better and better. Next one is the contact info container. We're going to give it a margin of zero. Call contact info container again as well as the p or the p inside of it and the nav links the lists and the a 
font size one rem to decrease the font size a bit specifically in the links and the uh, contact page next thing we're going to target is the experience experience subtitle we're going to give it a font size that's this one font size of 1.25 rem it's here actually as we can see yeah we're going to target our logo going to make it a bit smaller font size 1.5 rem we're going to target our nav links flex direction these are at the bottom we're going to give them a flex direction of column perfect and we're going to give them a gap a little bit of a smaller gap rem 0 0.5 and we are going to text align them center yeah looks much better next thing targeting is the section underscore underscore pick container and we want to adjust the width to be auto and then we want the height to be 46 view width and we want the justify content to be center there we go that is looking quite finished we just have a couple of more lines section underscore underscore text underscore underscore p2 and we're gonna make those section texts a bit smaller 1.25 rem looking good we're gonna target the title next font size 2 rem looking even better and then the text container that would be these I think yeah I think that's here or it's here let's see we're gonna text align that to justify right we want to make this appear a bit nicer on the mobile like that basically justify the text to take the whole width of the container and like that our whole website is done so it's looking good on the mobile as you can see the links work the hamburger menu works um, the whole page is fully mobile responsive if we go to uh, the um, pad version you could say you can still see that it looks good it looks very responsive and if we go to the desktop it is also looking good so there we go the next thing we're gonna do is to deploy this website on Netlify for free so that you can share this whole website uh, with your friends with your colleagues and you can start putting your own projects out there live for everyone to see so back in our vs code when you have been saving if you had github desktop open doesn't matter if you haven't but you can just open it now and it is going to automatically see that you have made a lot of changes to your um, repository so as you can see here it shows that basically you've added all the assets 
you've added all of this code in each of these files. So we're just gonna make a comment here, uh, finished uh, webs, website tutorial. We're gonna commit to main with this button and we're gonna push origin, which is gonna push our whole code to GitHub. Now we're gonna go to our browser again. You're gonna go to Netlify. I'm opening this in incognito because I'm already signed in. You're gonna go to sign up. You're gonna sign up with GitHub, with your GitHub account. So your username, email, password, etc. Once you have signed in, it's gonna look a bit like this. This is my personal Netlify account. So, it's going to look like this. You're going to go to add new site and you're going to click on import existing project. Here you're going to click on connect to Git provider, GitHub. It's going to ask you probably for some authorization. You're going to approve everything and you're going to go and search here. Maybe if you only have one repo, you're going to see it here, but you can search tutorial or whatever you called your repository. And it shows here as this is the one I've just been creating. I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna leave everything as it is, as default. And we're just gonna click deploy site. We can see here that the site deploy is in progress. It goes quite fast. Oops, didn't mean to click there. Within a couple of seconds, there we go. It says published. We can click this link here. And lo and behold, our site is live. Now you can share this with whomever you want. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like and a comment. That would mean the world to me. Uh, tell me what you liked, what you would like to be improved in the next video. And you can also comment down below and tell me what you would like to see next and what you would like a tutorial on next. So I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day.